Imagine you just bought a new smartphone and you're very much excited to connect it to your home Wi-Fi. But guys, as soon as you enter the Wi-Fi password, your phone starts to connect with the network. But have you ever wondered how your phone actually gets an IP address to join that network? Yes guys, the answer is DHCP protocol. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So guys, you can think of DHCP as a network's host who welcomes every new device. As soon as your phone tries to connect, DHCP quickly assigns it to an IP address, like giving it a unique seat at the table. So guys, in today's video, we are going to study about the DHCP protocol, which is a, one of the most important concepts in the networking. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. But before we move on, just a quick info, guys. Simply Learn has got a postgraduate program in cybersecurity. This course in cybersecurity is designed to equip you with the skills required to become a cybersecurity expert. The aim of this program is to help you stay abreast of all the latest trends in cybersecurity. So, guys, hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. So, guys, let's get started. So, guys, let us start with what is DHCP? DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It is a system that helps devices like computers, laptops, and smartphones to connect to a network automatically by giving them necessary settings, such as IP addresses. You can think of DHCP as a helper that makes sure each device on a network gets its own address so it can communicate with other devices without any mix-ups. So guys, for example, we have in a company with many employees using desktops and laptops. DHCP automatically assigns each device a unique IP address like 192.168.1.2, where they connect to the network. It also provides other important details like subnet mask, which helps the device understand which part of the IP address this network and what part is the device. Then there is a router's address, which is a gateway to other networks, usually something like 192.168.1.1. And the DNS address, which helps the device to find websites, like using 8.8.8 .8 to reach Google. So guys, this was an example of how DHCP works exactly. Now, let us try to understand some of the key components of DHCP. So guys, the first one that we have all over here is DHCP server. This is a central system that holds a range of IP addresses and configuration details. It assigns these addresses, devices, which are also known as clients to the network. Then you have the DHCP client. Any device such as computer, smartphone, or printer that connects to the network and requests an IP address from the DHCP server. Then you get DHCP relay. It basically acts as a middleman passing messages between clients and the server, especially useful when they are on the different networks. Then you have the IP address pool, where a collection of IP addresses that the DHCP server can allocate to the devices on the network. Then you have subnets, which are smaller segments of a larger networks helps to organize and manage network traffic efficiently. Then the sixth one is lease, the period during which a device can use assigned IP address. Once the lease expires, the device must request a new one. Then you have the DNS server. The DHCP server can also provide the addresses of DNS servers, which translate domain names into IP addresses, helping devices find websites on the internet. Then you have the default gateway. So guys, the default gateway is a device that routes traffic from a local network to the other networks, such as internet, and it is also provided by the DHCP server. Then you get options. So guys, additional configuration details like the subnet mask or the time server information is provided by the DHCP servers to the client. It comes in options. Then you get renewal. So guys, clients can ask the DHCP server to renew the lease before it expires, ensuring that they keep their current IP address. So that means renewal. Then comes failover. We are a backup system where two DHCP servers work together. So if one fails, the other can continue providing IP addresses to the clients. Next is dynamic updates. DHCP server can update DNS records with IP addresses of the client, making it easier to manage and find network resources. Next is audit logging. So finally guys, DHCP servers keeps a log of transactions and administrators to see which devices are using which IP addresses when the lease are issued or renewed. Now, let us try to understand the DHCP packet format. So guys, the DHCP packet format consists of several fields. 
each serving a specific purpose in the process of assigning IP addresses and other network information to the client. The first one is the hardware length. This is an 8-bit field that tells how the physical addresses like the MAC addresses is in bytes. For example, Ethernets whose value is 6 bytes. Then is hop count. Another 8-bit field that limits how the packet can travel across the network. It defines a maximum number of hops or transfer from one network device to the another the packet is allowed. Then is a transaction ID. It is a 4-byte field that holds a unique number created by the client. This ID helps the client and server to match request with the correct and reply, ensuring that the responses are linked to the correct request. Then there is number of seconds. This is a 16-bit field indicating how many seconds have passed since the client started trying to connect to the network. It helps track the time taken during the boot process. Then next is flags. It is also a 16-bit field where only the leftmost bit is used. If this bit is set, the server is required to send its reply as a broadcast message sent to all devices on the network rather than directly to the client, which is a unicast process. And also the remaining bits should be set to zero. The next is client IP address. It is a four byte field that contains the client's IP addresses if it is already having one. If the client doesn't have an IP address yet, this field will be filled with zeros. Then is your IP address. This is a 4-byte field that will be filled by the server with the IP address assigned to the client. This field is used to respond to the client request. Next is server IP address. It is a 4-byte field that holds the IP addresses of the DHCP server. This field is filled by the server when responding to a client's request. Next is gateway IP address. This is also a 4-byte field containing the IP addresses of the router or gateway. The server fills the field in its reply to indicate the router through which the client can access the other networks. The next is client hardware address. This field contains the physical MAC address of the client's device. Although the server can obtain this address from the packet itself, it is more efficient if the client provides it directly. The next is server's name. It is a 64-byte field that can optionally be filled by the server with its domain name like server.company.name. Repeat, like server.company.com. If the server doesn't want to use this field, it is also filled with zeros. Then there is boot file name. It is a 128 byte field that the server can optionally fill with the path to boot a file. This file can help the client during the boot process. If not used, the server fills the field with zeros. 13 is options. It is a 64 byte field which is used to carry additional configuration information or specific vendor details. This field is primarily used to reply messages from the server. The server may include a special identifier called a magic cookie with the value 99.130.83.99 that signals the presence of additional options for the client to process. So guys, this is what a DHCP packet format looks like. So guys, now let us try to understand how exactly DHCP works. So the overall process is called the DORA process. So there's a diagram all over here. So guys, as you can see in this diagram, so it is showing how a mobile host client, a DHCP relay and a DHCP server interact during the IP address assignment process. The first process is the DHCP discover. So you can see guys, the mobile host clients starts by broadcasting a DHCP discover message to find available DHCP servers. This message is broadcasted to all the devices on the network to discover if there is any DHCP server available that can assign an IP address. The DHCP server follows the path where message travels from the mobile host to the DHCP relay and the relay forwards it to the DHCP server. The broadcast nature of the message ensures that it reaches all the potential servers. The next process is DHCP offer. Upon receiving the DHCP discover message, the DHCP server responds with a DHCP offer message. The purpose of this message is that it contains an IP address and configuration details that the server is offering to the client. This offer includes IP address, subnet mask, gateway, and lease time. This DHCP offer message is a unicast back to the DHCP relay, which then forwards it to the mobile host. The use of unicast here ensures that the offer is directly communicated to the client that it is requested. The next is DHCP request. The mobile host upon receiving the DHCP offer responds with a DHCP request message. This message indicates that the mobile host has accepted the offered IP address and requests the server to formally assign it. The client is essentially saying, I would like to use the IP address that you have offered. The DHCP request message is broadcasted by the mobile host 
and the DHCP relay that forwards it to the DHCP server. Broadcasting ensures that the message also reaches to the potential DHCP servers. But it is specifically intended for one that made the offer. Now, the next comes DHCP acknowledgement. The DHCP servers, after receiving the DHCP request, sends back a DHCP acknowledgement message. The DHCP acknowledgement confirms that the IP address has been successfully assigned to the mobile host. And the client can now use this IP address for network communication. The server also records the lease time and other configuration details. This DHCP acknowledgement message is unicast from the server to the DHCP relay and then mobile host. This unicast ensures the acknowledgement directly reaches the requesting clients. The next is duplicate address detection by address resolution protocol. After mobile host is configured with the IP address, it performs a process that is known as duplicate address detection using ARP. This step ensures that no other devices on the network is using the same IP address. The mobile host sends an ARP request to check if any device responds with the same IP address. If no device responds, the mobile host confirms that IP address is unique. Now the next is DHCP request or lease renewal. As the lease time nears expiration, the mobile host sends another DHCP request message to renew the lease. The purpose of this message is that the request asks the DHCP server to extend the lease time for the IP address, allowing the mobile host to continue using it without interruption. The lease renewal request is unicast from mobile host to the DHCP relay and then to the DHCP server. Then you get a DHCP acknowledgement or the lease renewal. Here the DHCP server responds with another DHCP acknowledgement message to renew the lease. The acknowledgement message confirms that the lease has been extended allowing the mobile host to continue using the assigned IP address for the extended period. This acknowledgement is again unicast back to the DHCP relay and then to the mobile host. So guys, you can see I've taken an example, suppose here in the mobile host uh, is writing an email to his friend Jamie and here all the DHCP discover request process is happening. So you can also see that when this device is connecting to the network, so what kind of you know, IP address is being assigned and what kind of messages are happening? Is it a broadcast or unicast? Mostly in the interviews, guys, the technical question that they ask is, suppose, which message request is a unicast or broadcast in this process? So guys, go over through this. And uh, that was all for today's video, guys. I hope so. You would have enjoyed this video on DHCP protocol. And also, guys, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel for further updates. Till then, keep... Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.